The squadron leader squinted at the horizon as the dying sun turned the color of blood as it faded into the deep blue of the Persian Gulf. And he tensed, anticipating the flash of green said to accompany the sunsets of the tropics in the legends of the sea he had been raised with by a mother and father both serving in Her Majesty's Royal Navy. But these weren't the islands and enclaves of rebels and pirates of the Caribbean, written in tales by Robert Louis Stevenson. Here in the land of oil, camels, and shakes, the sky was far too hazy for the green flash. Though the squadron leader did hope that one day he might see this mysterious phenomenon, reported by sailors in far-flung and exotic locales across the empire. The squadron leader scoffed and kicked the dust, overlaying the black tarmac on which he stood as he yearned for a time he had never experienced. A lament so common in young men in our modern age, born too late to explore the edges of the map and too early to explore the reaches of space. The world was a far better place when the British Empire ruled the land and the Royal Navy the seas. A not so uncommon, if politically incorrect statement in this last vestige of the Empire and the Trucial Coast Air Force. A puppet of a puppet, a tax haven carved out of the Trucial Sultanates of the Raj and run by corrupt sheikhs BP executives and the Shah. He laughed at himself, completely content with playing the part of what naive university students across the West would consider a bad guy on the world stage. He was one of the first to be raised and trained wholly as a pilot by the 1st Special Operations Squadron and Imperial Aviation Company. A privateer of the sky that would make Captain Flint proud, but a privilege afforded by being the son of a former Royal Navy Phantom FGR-2 pilot and now board member of British Petroleum. And he smiled to himself, confident in his belief that the world would be a better place if it were run by English gentlemen. And every English gentleman needed a test of his strength character, and resolve. Being a lead F4E pilot in the first SOS, he had missed out on the opening stages of the war, his phantoms undergoing deep overhauls and upgrades in the shadowy hangars of the Imperial Aviation Company, and emerging festooned in the camouflage and roundels of the Trucial Coast Air Force, a ploy by the Shah to appease the squabbling shakes to be sure. The squadron leader chuckled as he walked up to his own personal F4E and ran his hand over the long, smooth surface of the AGM-88C Harm or high-speed anti-radiation missile hanging off the wing of his jet. A beautiful weapon whose sleek lines reminded him of the Mako sharks swimming off the coast in the Gulf. And he smiled knowing that tonight would finally be his test, his grand adventure to launch him into the ruling class of English gentlemen, his Trafalgar, his Battle of Britain, his Falklands, his ticket to join those that ruled the world. Because after all, the Empire never died. It just faded away from hard to soft power. Or at least, that's what those in this last enclave of the old ways of the Empire believed, he thought to himself as he climbed up the boarding ladder and into the cockpit of his Phantom. The ever-present, judgmental gaze of his father burning through his helmet from the boardroom of the BP offices high in the Burj Khalifa. 1200 nautical miles across the Great Sand Sea of the Arabian Desert, in the heart of the holy city of Jerusalem, 
The Shah's daughter was led across the plaza after praying in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, towards the Temple Mount. In her first official appearance as the new crown empress of the Kingdom of Daimar. She had been whisked away against her will from Crown Prince Hassan Air Base in a flurry of activity after landing from her combat air patrol over the Red Sea in support of the RDNS Suez and her battle group. She was given no time to celebrate her aerial victory after Red Crown had committed her flight on a group of intruding Arab Republic of New Alexandria Air Force MiG-29 fulcrums. The Shah had instructed his handlers not to be delicate with her. This was her new duty. She was forcefully stripped of her flight gear, immediately bathed, and thrown into a beautiful but modest dress flown in from the fashion houses of Italy. Her hair pulled and tugged by stylists in the cargo hold of a CH-47 Chinook, then immediately covered by a black, green, and white hijab and makeup applied by the finest of artists onto a very unwilling face. She was far more comfortable in her olive green and desert tan flight gear in the cockpit of her F-4 or in yoga pants and a t-shirt with a messy bun hung low on her neck. All her life, she was told she was an outsider, even by her own family. Too tall, too European looking, hair too blonde, eyes too blue, her skin too light. She was here to pay respects to the war dead with a delegation of the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem the Bishop of Jerusalem and the Rabbi of Jerusalem, and to be shown to the world as the next leader in line of the Kingdom of Heaven. This place had always frightened her as a child. It was so ancient, so ominous, as she observed adults believing and becoming enthralled in what appeared to her to be the same ghosts and echoes over the eons that she was told were machinations of a childish mind, and led her not to believe. A secret she harbored deep in her soul, being far more inclined to believe in the warrior code and ethos of the pagan and Norse traditions embraced by the warriors of the sky she called her true brothers and sisters. And as she walked to the sacred rubble of the West Wall and wrote a prayer for the dead under the direction of the rabbi and the watchful eyes of the mufti and bishop, she wished it could have been her with Odin in the halls of Valhalla rather than her brother, the crown prince lost in the first few hours of the war in his F-14A Tomcat. And as she slid the note into the jagged cracks of the west wall, she mourned for the dead of the new war, her brother, and for her own old life. And she finally felt the pain she knew her father had felt her whole life, as it gripped her heart and her stomach fell. The pain and guilt were unbearable, as she knew in her soul she was needed elsewhere, almost vomiting in the holiest of sights, longing to be with her squadron mates and the pilots of the Royal Daimar Air Force, the Trucial Coast Air Force, and the 1st Special Operations Squadron. Her handlers and the press were ecstatic to see the tears and emotion on her face, as she was bombarded by thousands of questions from those as broad and insoluble as how will you improve relations between the Abrahamic religions, to as pointed, personal, and hurtful as, are you still a virgin? As the delegation of religious leaders and the crown empress made the climb towards the Al-Aqsa Mosque, 
the thunder of the military and religious drums was matched only by her heart beating through her chest and the thunder and cacophony of hundreds of J-79, TF-30, F-100, F-110, RD-93, M-53, and F-404 engines groaning and screaming to life a thousand miles across the Great Sand Sea. Airmen and ground crew of the Royal Daimar Air Force, Trucial Coast Air Force, 1st Special Operations Squadron, United States Air Force, Royal Daimar, and United States Marine Corps completed their final checks as ground crew pulled gear and arming pins and chocks, and pilots threw up salutes, finger guns, shakas, and peace signs from the eerie green and red glow of their cockpits before starting their taxi to the runway at airfields across the Musandam Peninsula. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the mission briefing for vol number two of the IADS rollback operation over the Persian Gulf. I'm squadron leader Spud of the first SOS, and as you're all well aware of, today's mission involves a wide spectrum coalition of airmen and support personnel from across the Royal Daimar military, the Trucial Coast military, and the United States military. We have a lot to cover in a very short period of time, so let's move through this faster and funnier. The situation over the Persian Gulf for today is as follows. The ambush and subsequent rolling air battle over the Strait of Hormuz was largely a success for the TCAF and 1st SOS. However, it further heated up the tit-for-tat actions of the Eastern Front of the New War. In response to the ambush, IEPAF F-5E Tiger II and MiG-29 Fulcrums have attacked and sunk a Trucial Coast tanker off the coast of Muscat. While the crew was safely rescued and one of the F-5Es was downed by a TCAF Mirage F-1, these blows to international oil markets are not tolerable to the Trucial Coast, Kingdom of Daimar, or the Western Allies. While the IPAF and IEPN has had its nose bloodied, it is still a significant threat in being to the flow of oil through the straits. And while the Persian IADS has been avoided in previous operations, the first step in fully eliminating the threat and gaining air superiority over the Strait of Hormuz is the rollback of the Persian IADS throughout the Strait of Hormuz area of operations. The commander's intent for today, of course, is to suppress and destroy any active Emirates of Persia sand batteries in the Strait of Hormuz area of operations. The METAR, as of 0253 local time, wind was 300 at 10 knots with 10 statute miles visibility. Scattered clouds are up at 13,000 with a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius and a dew point of negative 3. Everything today is all standard. We've got uh, nines and twos, and peak wind was 270 at 20 knots, 35 minutes past the hour. For seed and deed team objectives, we're going to attack and destroy active SAM sites in the assigned target area and assist teams assigned to additional target areas as required. For cap, Provide combat air patrol over the Musin Dom Peninsula and protect friendly coalition air and ground assets from IEPAF aircraft in the area of operations. So this is just going to be basically your standard DCA setup for you guys. For the swing cap and deed cap objective, you have the same objective as the pure cap guys. However, you are going to be on station with some harms on bar or some extra JDAMs to provide extra air to ground munitions if required by the deed effort. For the strike objective, to attack and destroy fast attack aircraft and clandestine mothership in La Rock Island Harbor. However, unfortunately for you guys who are assigned to the strike objective, the ATO has changed and you've been Rolexed back to the vol number 3 of the operation tonight. Bullseye for all vols and all players is Bondar Abbas Airfield. The ROE flight into the Islamic Emirates of Persia is definitely permitted. For air-to-air -air IFF, two-factor IFF is required. 
electronic via mode 3 or mode 4, and one of the following. A declaration of outlaw, a TGP or visual capture or using your Mark 1 eyeball, an AIC declaration of hostile, and if there is a furball, visual confirmation only. We don't want any Fox 3s fired in the blind uh, mad dog into a furball. Ray gun calls are not valid due to the high RWR activity and the limitations of our F4 crews. Hard deck for weapons employment today is 10,000 feet MSL to keep us out of the flak uh, envelope. However, if you are dodging a SAM or running away from a MiG, feel free to break that 10,000 foot hard deck as you see fit. For our timeline today, as we just noted, our strike flights are going to be Rolex back to vol number 3 of this operation, so we can ignore anything to do with the strike window. We're stepping to the jets at 02, uh, 0320 local time with a vol start time at 0410. That'll give you guys roughly 50 minutes for aircraft start, uh, troubleshooting of aircraft, and then taxi and takeoff and transit to your uh, marshal points to make that vol time. At vol minus two, we're gonna have a roll call on 305 decimal zero with Snoopy. We are focusing on running a one freak war today, so it's going to be rather busy on that strike frequency, so radio discipline is a must. At vol plus 80, that's going to be a hard egress time for all flights. Of course, as you guys saw there, we are going to be all flights are going to be pushing with our cap flights on station at vol plus zero, zero four ten. After 80 minutes, our vol is going to end and our all flights will be a hard egress time and miller time from there. Then, after a transit of roughly one hour, at roughly vol plus 140, all flights should be back on the deck and that is when vol number three is going to open and those flights are going to push to those same targets to keep degrading that IADS that we've been hitting. CD Team 1 is going to be attacking SAM sites located in the Greater and Lesser Tomb Islands. This is going to be the uh, team that I personally am going to be leading. We're going to be expecting a mix of SA-2s, SA-3s, SA-6s, and SA-11s, depending on what the Persians have set up on these islands and around Kish Island and Bandar Lange. We're going to be separating each island into a separate geographical area, and we're only going to be attacking specific geographical areas at a time, then moving through systematically rolling that IADS back towards the north. We're going to separate my flight into two sections. Section uh, 2 is going to hit Siri Island and uh, Lesser Tomb, and Section 1 that I'll be personally leading will be attacking Abu Musa Island and uh, greater Tomb Island. We'll also split up our Diad flight in the same way to attack uh, thoroughly through those different geographical points to roll that IADS back uh, methodically. Moving on, Siad uh, Diad Team 2 is going to be in the Strait of Hormuz area, and you'll be going after SAM sites on Keshem Island. Hormuz Island and around Bandar Abbas and the port of Havadaria. Again, your guys' push is going to be at vol plus zero and expect a mixture of SA2s, 3s, 6s, and 11s. Seed Diad Team 3 is going to be attacking SAM sites located around Bandar e Jask in the mouth of the Strait of Hormuz. While Less SAM sites are known to be operating in this area, it is absolutely critical that these SAM sites are downed in order to allow uh, friendly naval assets to transit closer to the Strait of Hormuz in order to protect those friendly uh, shipping assets moving oil through the Strait itself. Once we get that, those SAM sites degraded, aircraft carriers will be able to move closer and give those tankers that air cover they desperately need. Moving up. 
For combat air patrol, swing cap, and seed cap, you guys are going to be flying a cap station over the very tip of the Musindam Peninsula. And keep in mind that the uh, AWACS and AIC may move you guys around and shift your cap station slightly to get you into better position to assist friendly assets in their attacking of those SAM sites. Again, the strike objective, uh, the strike mission itself has been Rolex back to vol number three of the IADS rollback operation. However, just for you guys' situational awareness and keep your SA up, uh, there is a strike target area at the northern edge of Hormuz Island that is a mothership that has been giving her chicks uh, supplies in order to harass friendly shipping in the Strait of Hormuz. And this is basically just a write out of exactly in a textual format, the plan that we have for each individual team. So if that's all we've got, let's move on to the strike package comms flow. Again, big emphasis item here. We are running a one freak war. You and your flights are gonna come up on ground control. We do have operating ground controllers at each airfield today. You'll then move on to the tower frequency when holding short of the runway or you're getting close to the runway as through your taxi. You'll then be shoveled off to Trucial Control once you are airborne, who will then probably give you radar vectors up to an altitude and once outside of the airspace of the airfield, you'll then be given own nav to your marshal points. Snoopy and Red Crown will both be operating on 305.0. Once again, running a one freak war today. You'll then push over to the tanker frequency as required for air to air refueling. If you elect to get juice before the start of the vol, that is available to you at, and is at the discretion of flight leads. However, I do need to emphasize this, that we need to ensure that at least one member of a flight is monitoring the strike frequency at all times to keep appraised of changes or Rolexes to the vol period, uh, threat calls, uh, lowdowns or MIG threat calls, and other types of contingency issues that may arise. Intraflight freaks today are going to be shared between flights to ensure that our CD teams are consolidated onto one frequency to allow for better um, communication and planning between those assets. Airspace admin, we kind of just covered that a little bit, but basically for departure procedures, expect runway heading up to an altitude, then once outside of the terminal airspace, most likely uh, just own nav on course to your marshal point. For the holding patterns today, it's gonna be left-hand turns between two different waypoints. So hit that first waypoint, make a left-hand turn to the second waypoint, and then another left-hand turn to the first waypoint, and so on and so forth until the start of the vol and your call to push via the AIC. For arrival procedures, that'll be assigned via uh, Trucial Coast Control. Probably be expecting some sort of vectors to an approach and then that approach procedure will be also assigned by Trucial Coast Control, expect an ILS or weather depending a visual to an overhead pattern arrival weather dependent, of course. And that is all we've got for today, guys. Pretty simple mission briefing for a rather simple mission today. Just be extremely cognizant of those threat rings around the SAMs. Keep your SA up and don't let any leakers or MIGs get into the areas where we're working those CD teams. So good luck, guys. We're all counting on you and fly safe out there.
ground on 275.25 point uh, decimal 250. How about them generators? I can start the alarm. Roger that. Ground tower is resting. Starting forward, heading alignment. One tree, good count. Ocean one one, radio check. Hey, limiter. Slaps out. Slaps out. Ocean flight, uh, what was our Tacan yardstick again? Tacan yardstick is uh, 23 and 86 x-ray. 23, thank you. One flight, one's green. Check off in order. Uh, wheel chalks out, chalks out. Okay, sir, we're good to go. Have a safe flight and disconnect. Ocean one three to lead. Uh, just stand by. Two having some uh, radio difficulties here. Roger. Charlie, 
station off the uh, runway Ultra. Ultra runway two way right, taxi via Charlie, back on nine. Alt off our ground is Ocean Flight uh, 4 F4 is on the north ramp, ready for taxi. Ocean Squad, stand by. Ocean Squad, you are cleared to taxi to runway 31 right and hold taxi short. Copy that taxi to 31 right, holding short of runway 31 right for Ocean 1 in flight. 3, go ahead and lead us out. 4, follow 3, and 2, follow me. 4, start rolling. 4, roll one. One's rolling. You have the best job in the world. Two's roll. Leave lots of space on a taxi. No need for any mishaps. Hey, we're gonna be down in waterfowl territory in this flight. Five seconds, staggered departure. You'll lead us out to the marshal. I'll take over the lead once we get to marshal. Guys, when we swap the tower up here when we're holding short, we're gonna do another radio check on the tower frequency. I just wanna hear two, three, four on that frequency.
Ocean flight switch up tower, button four. Ocean flight check. Ocean flight, uh, pre takeoff checks, canopies, pedo heat, centerline tanks. All Dafra Tower, Ocean 1, flight of 4 F4 is holding short 3 1 right, ready for departure. Canopy down and locked, lights out and stripes aligned. Ocean 1, all Docker Tower, good morning, I have your clearance when you're ready to copy. Ocean 1 is ready to copy. Ocean 1, all Docker Tower, there's zeros on my service plan, all right, so we're at 5 at 4 knots. On departure, fly runway heading up to 5,000 feet for 5 miles. Ocean 1, flight for the takeoff. I've got you on the, uh, I got you on the interflight, uh, bro. Free run right, clear for takeoff, uh, runway heading up to 5,000 okay, for 5 okay. DME for Ocean 1 flight. Here we go, Ocean Flight. It's going to be runway heading up to 5,000 for 5 DME. On set. She is uh, running it off. <laughs> brakes, brakes, brakes. Adafra control, uh, 26 flight, changing frequency with uh, red crown on the uh, 305 this month. Two, release. Down six, copy radar contact, four miles, you're clear, next button, navigation under your own uh, direction. See? I copy. Stop the brakes. Engine geared, airspeed off the peg. And two to one. One hundred knots. Delta two foot held off the tower. Good morning. Uh, Nail ten o'clock. And uh, Nail. Delta two five. Hello. Gears moving. Delta flight. I have your uh, clearance when you're ready. To up, gear up. Delta 25 is ready to copy. Delta 25, altimeter 291. Surf swings are 295 at 4 knots. Watch for the traffic dead ahead. On departure, flight runway heading up to 5,000 feet for 5 miles. Going, uh, nail 10 o'clock. Radar 
Houston, one flight. Uh, Leaving my airspace, you're cleared to resume navigation of your own power. I cleared a uh, switch 305.0 for Red Crown. See ya. Uh, oh, nav and switching tactical uh, for Ocean uh, 1. Thanks. Flight push button 8 1, or sorry, 3, own nav to uh, the marshal point. Good steering on the next turn point. Uh, three coming right. Uh, I'm showing nails uh, nine uh, ten o'clock and uh, um, nails six o'clock. Lead two seven. Angels 2 3. Clyde 3, contact, good alpha check. Angels 2 3. 2 o'clock. And uh, nails 5 o'clock. Red Crown, then 6 1, request uh, alpha check. Don, 6. Ocean 1, 0, 180. Copy my last. And Doc 6 1, good alpha check. Uh, Ocean 1, flight of 4, F4 is checking in, no alibis, uh, request alpha check. Ocean, straight out contact, alpha check, we'll say 210, Alpha check, sweet, sweet, request block 230. Just 23. Uh, A firm. Uh, roger, approved as requested. Ocean 1. Rusty one one ocean one one. Hey there, Rusty one one. Uh, come back to uh, flight level two three zero for the marshal. If you want to meet us there, uh, or if you want to keep an altitude set, just let us know. Have that two six zero. Would you mind bringing it downstairs just a hair and uh, join up on us? It'll be a little bit easier with your data link. Copy. Want to want us to meet you two three? That's a uh, a firm for uh, Ocean One. Thirty miles, sixteen thousand. Uh, you paint. It is a friendly. Three one's getting saddled on your left. Red Crown, Rusty one one, requesting altitude change to Angels two three. And one three seven, I'll get down to uh, three hundred here, just three. so it's uh, easier for you guys to fly formation. Yeah, 
a new bogey, right 25, 32 miles, 9,500. Hold on, I give you a T5, right? Uh, front, we're requesting a change of 2 3 so we can uh, uh, rendezvous with the uh, ocean flight. Roger, Rusty. Call me back in two mics. Roger, right 25 degrees, 34 miles, 19,000. Target paint, it's a buddy. Awesome job, Ocean 1-3. Ocean 1-1's one, taking the lead. Coming left, entering the marshal.
Red Crown Ocean, 1-1, one, one, strike lead, send it. Ocean 1-1, one, one, Red Crown, um, backbone 9 has requested a sip of the tanker, do we want to do that? We have a friendly, 6 o'clock. A firm, backbone is cleared to join up on the tanker. And Red Crown for, for Motion 1-1, one, one. that does not affect the push, uh, push flights, even if Backbone's still tanking. Roger. Ocean 1-1, Rusty 1-1. Rusty 1 for Ocean. Uh, what's your distance for, from the, uh, Marshal? To the target? I'm not sure what you're asking, sorry. Are you on the Marshall or on your way to the Marshall? Texco 2 1, back on 9 1. Thanks. Currently established at Marshall Angels 2 3. Roger, I think I see you down by Big Lake. We are seven mics from the uh, Marshall. Copy. Flight. Sorry, I shook you guys off there. That was a pretty hard turn. Four is good. In trail. Three still has you. In trail. Copy that. We're going to hold it right about, uh, about 350 indicated. Rusty 1 from Ocean 1, if you guys are late or we need extra time for the form up, we can delay our push slightly. Ocean flight from one. Make sure you only have one arm station selected for each time you press the pickle button, so that way you don't inadvertently fire both missiles. Four. Ocean flight, fence in. Ocean 
and ones at Marshall, ready to rock, no allies. Rusty one. Osha one, two, Rusty one, two, point three, music on. Alright, turn five, five three. Lights on for now for the join up with uh, Rusty. Recommend we keep lights on just for separation. If we get any MIGs intermixed with us, then we'll go lights out. Three, two, one. All players push. Ocean one push. at the turn, guys. Rusty 1, Ocean 1, we're uh, heading back northbound towards the start of the uh, Marshall. Uh, let us know when you're joined up with us and we'll get going. Active, bullseye 230, 125, bullseye 221, 110, low active, bullseye 225, 90, swap active, bullseye 224, we are ready to present ourselves for our interest, no drift, asleep, bullseye 140. Uh, switch so that you're going to be in travel with the uh, three, so me in front of you for our push. A firm. Ocean flight to travel. Uh, Ground 6 flight is requesting a block altitude of our ability to secure. Ground 1, 3, 0, I'm just going to uh, overtake you here. Uh, Saddle left, I'm going to be in front of you. Ocean One's got visual on you, Rusty. One. Ocean One's maybe join up on you, uh, Rusty One. We have a bogey. Left five, eighteen miles, twenty-three thousand. Five, Good IFF. He's a friendly. Uh, yeah, Rusty 
Ocean 3 and 4, you're cleared to detach. Uh, Ocean, three copies, but uh, maybe we should wait until uh, until we push, or...? Three pushes already happened. Red Mel, backscatter 7-1, I'm requesting higher up to... Uh, yeah, but three means uh, we'll follow them in and then we'll just make a left for Sherry Island uh, and go from there. Actually, no, you're already at 3 0. I'm sorry, 3 0 to 3 2. Uh, can we get a 3 5 0? Uh, new steering set. Uh, Max Gutter, yeah, I'll give you a 3 5 0. Are you in a left hand over? Copy that. Uh, one one is uh, Buster to catch up with you. Ocean one two from one one. Go gate. Ocean one three from one one. Uh, your flight is off to the right. Ocean 1, 2, come out of gate. Rusty 1, 1, recommend quick left hand spin. One ocean ones passing through your three o'clock. Uh, where is the uh, Rusty 
Bobby 3, recommend target bra 08033, 12,000, hot hostile, two contacts. Yeah, two, follow me in. Don't shoot. I'm the shooter. Copy. Two's going. I'm using... Rusty, one, one. You got that track radar on the pod? Rusty, one, one. Hey, wait. On SA6, track radar. Copy that. Bonnie, three, one. <laughs> Ten left for 18. Magnum, SA6, Abu Musa. Ocean one's defensive. East. SA6 off the air. We have a new one. Seventeen thousand five hundred. We have a friend. Trail one over cross. Four miles. Okay. Not getting any IFF. That's bad. Ocean uh, 140. I'm a Syria Island in sight. It's uh, off uh, trees. Twelve o'clock. Right. Thirty degrees. Nine miles. Source right on. Single group lead on. Right echelon. Positive. Positive IFF. We have a friendly Hornet, 12 o'clock, 2 miles, and a friendly 3 o'clock. Thanks, I'm at 11, catch my left. Ocean 1-1, one, one, Ocean 1-2 one, is recycling back in motion. Ocean 1-4, uh, 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 can you drop into trail? I'll be the shooter, I'll go in first. I'll see if I can get some sounds in here at Syria and I'll see if I can shoot him. Fox 2. One, one, five, two, four, one, one, five. That's a friend. We have a friend. Uh, uh, four miles. Uh, say again for Ocean One One. Mud. Seven o'clock. Go ahead and recycle back to Marshall. We'll reform there. Ocean Lead Two. I got an SA Two on the air. Yeah, copy that. Uh, most likely splash. Go ahead and uh, skip it. Bonnie three two, Verba East ten, single group lead arm in your leader. Bonnie three two copies. Ocean one one's climbing through two two zero up to two three zero, heading southeast. SA-6, Siri Island, uh, last station reported, payway, please, about... Oh, we've got a bogey. Uh, uh, three, for that ball, was for Albert right, Musa, Albert uh, Musa. Uh, we're gonna be Bonnie 3-1 and soon we'll lead on. Ocean lead 2, can you bring it back, 50 dots, please? I just bring it back to 3 zero on the box. Gunner trail arm vanished. Thank you. Mud, 4 o'clock. Ocean 1-3, I got the 6, uh, at the Siri Island. Magnum on it. Red Crown, back on 9-1. Open 
shoot that SA6, shoot him. Uh, red Crown at two groups and two packages. South package is the fur boss I was talking about earlier. North package, bullet by 040. Uh, ocean 14, uh, ocean 13 is turning cold from Sierra. You be the shooter, I can't get the harm to come off. Back load at 9, go. Uh, Alright, Crown back to 9. Go. One one hit, so get gas if you need it. Ocean 1 for you, need to back up on that SA6. Rusty 1 3, pay you for the Watch for the radio disc one. Ocean 1 2, I've got you, Vision. Missile launch, missile launch. I get right time for right, the right, 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 right. Back scatter 7, Rod 030, 60. SA2 launch is splash. SA2 launch is splash. Three contacts. Two stood at a in the air. SA-6 on Siri still on the air. Oh, Luis, G-3, finally have radar contact. A-4-1, uh, Ocean-1-3 is rolling in on Copy. Cover that rusty 1-3. SA-6 off the air. Account single group, pulls at 0 4 5 48 32,000 tracks. Anyone Sound got BDA on that SA-6 at Siri? Red flag. SA-6 at Siri, sure, sure, sure. Copy that, copy that strike uh, package, we're recycle we're back to Marshall for replay. Backscatter 7, where are you going to take them right now? Backscatter 7, 2 is in. Backscatter is in route, uh, this has a 16 flight of uh, uh, descent. Ocean 1-3, turning back to uh, Marshall. Uh, Louis flies, staying below, angel 2-5, uh, Ocean 1-1 one one is left wagon wheel at 2-2-0, waypoint 2. Ocean flight, ocean flight, music off. Got a bogey, left 5, 23 miles, 24,000. Ocean flight, music off. It's the friend, IFF checks out. Got a contact. Right, 35 degrees, 18 miles, 22,000. Best counter steel group split in range. Verify target lead up. Response, target is a bandit. Ocean 1-1, uh, one, one, what's your uh, altitude? Ocean 1-1 one, one is at 2-2-0. Two, two, 
Alright, if you guys are uh, good for a quick a change in the game plan, looks like we can uh, start pushing towards a greater and lesser tomb and pick you guys up under the northbound. New bogey, left 20, 25 miles, 21,500. shoot the trail arm, broad 010 for 50, 35,000. Checks out target paint. You've got steering to the new point now. It's got some contacts. Red Crown, right, Ocean 11. What are you guys? Ocean 1, wait 1, break Red Crown, lead arm, banish. Next guy, 72, broad 010, 20, 35,000, hot muscle, 2 contacts. 22. And a friendly bra right 20, 23 miles. Angels 22. 7 recommend out south. Backscatter 7 1 3 6 0 45 17,000. Hot hostile 2 contacts. Backscatter is Luis. We're covering you. You can back out. We're engaging. 1 2, wait, one. ocean 1 go. We uh, request a version to Dubai. I'm not going to fake the taker. Who needs to divert? Rusty 1-2, goodbye. Right over top of it. Rusty 1-2, take it. That's gonna send one of us. Rusty 1-2. Ocean 1, make it quick. Ocean 1, any threats to the uh, West Sea group? Negative. Copy. Ocean 1 is completing the spin, then northbound back towards waypoint 4. Backscatter 7 2 faded. Ocean 2, or Ocean 3 and 4 concentrate on Lesser 2. And uh, Rusty 3 and 4 concentrate on Lesser 2. All others concentrate on Greater 2. Ocean 2. Yeah, I just want your team kill. Rusty 3. Positive IFF. Ocean 1 2, uh, you with 1 1? Uh, Ocean 2 is uh, about 300 feet behind you. After that 1 2, you uh, got the lead for this attack, you're the shooter. Could be on lesser tomb, the smaller island, the smaller island to the left hand side. Hexagon 1, Rod 245, 53, Angel 1 8. Hexagon 1, Rod 2, 4, 5, 53, Hexagon 1, thank you, we'll switch. Positive, I Actually, body scratch that team, Hexagon 2, uh, Hexagon 1 is turning out. That's gonna waste more fuel. We will take Hexagon 2, thanks. Ocean 1's rolling out. The Crown Seal Group. Ocean 1-1's one, pushing. 1-2, one, hop out in front. Two copy, passing on your right. Red Crown, Bonnie 3, one more shot, Texaco as a FERS tanker. Do you have a boom only tanker? Ocean 2, Texaco. My apologies, I thought you were Hornets. Give me one move. Uh, shot 1, Broad 2, 2, 3, 61, 81. Ocean 1, Ocean uh, 3, and Ocean 4, one, 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 Mud on our nose, 12 o'clock. SA-3. SA-3 on the air, on the nose. Most likely lesser tomb. Pilot. Last caller, you stepped on. I got an SA-3, 12 o'clock on two. 
Yep, SA3 nails, 12 o'clock. Rusty 1-1 one, one has an SA2 on radar to my left. Swamp activity, most likely splash. Red Crown, this is Backscatter 7 3. Backscatter 7 go. My uh, Red Crown, this is Backscatter 7 3. Uh, Backscatter 7 flight is down 1. Uh, flight and lead, uh, Ocean 1 2, Glad we remain from the uh, island we're targeting is the right island. For 1 2, that is correct. Red Crown, copy, backscatter, minus. Copy, hopefully the harm can discern. And lead to a minute pass, uh, Musa in front of us so we don't uh, get a harm on there. A firm, a firm. No wasted ordnance on Abu Musa. Sorry, got a new bogey. Right five, one mile. Red Crown got a 500. bad label who's passing through uh, 270 off in the north. Missile launch. Positive IFF return. Target is a friendly. No slide at that range. Just two Copy that, copy that. It's a uh, splash. One two speed check. Question one two is holding four hundred indicated. There's a launch. Launch. Copy that. Question two has got the uh, two and three off. Six flight is a joker. Sure. Copy that. Strike package, Abu Musa's on our left 9 o'clock, Greater Tomb, Lesser Tomb are on the nose at 12 o'clock. Ocean 1, status. Ocean 1's pushing inbound towards Greater and Lesser Tomb Islands. Ocean 1 2, you're the shooter. If the SAM lights off, then uh, shoot a magnum at him. Ocean 2. Recommend defensive turn turns east. A from Ocean Two copies. Uh, we got Ocean Two is beginning to dive. Push 
Copy. Shoot, a, shoot the harm anyway. Copy. Ocean 2, Magnum, Greater 2. Coming east. Right, Ocean 3. Three. Hey, uh, Shadow, this is for Ocean 2. Very break, miss some launch, okay, two. Copy. You're cleared to ingress in and drop on Greater 2. So we are in the debrief here, and we'll move through the debrief uh, flight by flight. Um, let's see, looking at the sign-up sheet, let's start at the top here, and we'll move our way down. And then uh, if any flights are not represented by who's still here, then we will keep on going. So anyone from Backbone 9 flight still in the server? Okay. All dead. All gone. Okay. Um, let's see here. Moving on down from Backscatter 7. Anyone still here? Yep, he's still here. All right, yep. let's find Backscatter F-15s. Okay, so we're coming. We're taking off and uh, lead from Backscatter 7. Uh, go ahead and uh, lead us through the flight. Oh, nothing much right here. We're just uh, obviously getting on station for CAP, basically. Um we eventually got get directed to a uh, hostile group. There was a blue on blue contact today, unfortunately. Okay. Um, but there was, it was try to be, it was going, it was, should have been mitigated. It shouldn't have happened, but uh, it was miscommunication and things. Um, okay. But as soon as you, uh, as soon as we get in, looks like chili almost hit you. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I was got bored. I was messing with him. Uh, yeah. Okay, so here we, here we go. There's the first MiGs <clears throat> taking off, scrambling out of Giraft Air Base to the direct north of Bondar Abbas. Yeah, and so... Sorry, go ahead. Go for it. No, I was going to say, um, we have the F-16s there, so we're trying to mitigate any blue blue with them. Um, obviously, they're doing God's work with the SAMs. Um, so we kind of waited, so they started flowing south to try to engage. For whatever reason, these makes they, st they stay kind of low. And um, you'll see when Chili's fighting. And then he breaks off eventually. Roger. So Chili fired an M120 and got a kill on yeah. one of the MiGs. So and it looks like he fired a second shot at that same MiG. And then he is going defensive. Let's see how far away. So that was a pretty far shot, I think, with that first AMRAM. So he fired, sorted on the dash two, or no, I guess not. So that was a 40 mile AIM 120 shot to end up being a kill. So that's yeah, I took a uh, edge of the envelope shot with that first one off their lead. Yeah, nice job. Uh, the second one, I was having issues with my uh, 
TWS. So I went back to a STT, and unfortunately, the second um, missile still went on that first dude. Yeah. Okay. So we're, and if you we're, back up oh. about three seconds, right about here, yeah, I received a Raygon call from Cyclops. Gotcha. But off my six, I still had that dude that I was receiving nails on. Gotcha. And Cyclops, did you have a? Yeah. What happened so, with the IFF here? So yeah, uh, we had the Raygun call, and uh, he says, "Yeah, um, take it." And with the, I guess with the Strike Eagle, it's really hard to tell. I'm not sure if their radar is adequate yet, or if it's still bugged or not. But um, we had him locked up, and it, there was no IFF on it. There was nothing. You can only okay. see it on R, R, RWR either. Uh, and truly, so, did you have a did you STT lock him, or did did you just do? Uh, no, it was that was STT because okay. I could see him out of the cockpit. And that's all yeah. I was asking. And the uh, left left right on the the Cooley switch, uh, you didn't get uh, didn't get a nectar return or no or a nothing or a mode four. Okay. Yeah. No. Um. No, no, it was nothing. It would come back unknown. Huh. Gotcha. I've been getting a lot of those. The uh, only well, that the was reason. nectar. You didn't get anything on mode four. Yeah, because I I had the only thing I had for showing on my twos page was my six o'clock. Yeah. Um, Interesting. And then uh, Chili, you had your uh, mode three and mode four transponder turned on through your UFC as part of your startup procedure, right? Correct. Okay. Well, we'll chalk that one up to uh, oopsie daisies. And we'll continue on here. So it looks like Essa took a pretty good long shot, at least a 30 mile shot there to help you guys out. Uh, about 24 mile shot. And okay, so it looks like Cyclops. Yeah, I, I cleaned them up. Here. And killed one. And then Essa got the other. And then that ends the first air to air engagement. And then anything. Else of note in the flight for backscatter seven? Not uh, not right here. There's a uh, there's another engagement, but that's a little bit further down the pipe here. Okay, so it looks like you guys are recycling back to the cap station as briefed. So that's perfect. I really like to see that. So that way, Red Crown can then uh, get you guys on two different uh, right. And targets. we get another hostile group coming from the east right uh, shortly, but I'm not sure exactly when that is. But it comes from the east. Shortly hereafter, uh, from the west. Oh, sorry, from okay. the west. Right. Yeah, and it looks west. like okay. So it looks like Backbone ain't got into it with them. We'll come back to Backbone. Oh, we already tried to talk to Backbone. Never mind. Uh, I'm here. So, I, sorry, I misunderstood. Backbone leads here. Oh, okay. Um. So we'll go through it with Backscatter first. Then we'll we'll backtrack. Yeah. So uh, Backbone's getting into it, and uh, um, I might dash three Marnock. I guess they. Couldn't get them on art on their radar. Still a bug issue going on. So it was trying okay. to confirm, uh, trying to get the hornets out of the way or make sure we don't hit them. But uh, we ended up kind of getting into a little kerfuffle here. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what was going on with the eagle today, but we didn't have a single radar contact for the entire mission. Interesting. In flow. Our radar was perfectly clean, at, yeah. like the entire time. And I idea. cycled it on off emergency. Nothing worked. I've had that happen before in the F-15E back when I was still flying it. So yeah. it's not unheard of. Okay, so looks it's like a, Cyclops is now merged. Yeah, so I'm trying to make sure this is not up. like a Hornet or something. <laughs> I'm like, uh... Because <laughs> I could have killed him an, uh, like you know a while ago, but I thought he might have been a Hornet and I didn't want to take the shot. And so... yeah. I'm trying to listen to Red Crown, and they're saying we're merged, and he's close by. I'm like, all right, where is he? What was that? And that, that missile there was for the guy that was dying, or was dead. He gotcha. was still flying. Okay, and it looks like uh, Sly Fox got gunned by the MiG-21 there. Yeah, so I mean, I had opportunity to kill this guy like 20 yeah. times already, but I'm not sure who he is. Yeah. And then gotcha. I, I see him behind uh, Monarch, and I'm like, okay, you're... That's it. Yeah. Well, I think probably a little bit of a uh, case of, you know, obviously we want to double check and make sure we know who we're shooting at, but probably also a little bit of a case if you were probably a bit nervous to accidentally shoot down another friendly 
right? Yeah, I mean, that was <laughs> that was part of it, but it's like for sure, yeah. not knowing for sure, and yeah. yeah, it's kind of a especially with all the aircraft in the area. This is, I didn't want to take that chance again. Yeah, gotcha. my two cases of beer is gonna be expensive. Yeah, <laughs> um, you want Blue Rampage. As is as is tradition, you are supposed to buy him an F four here in the uh, <laughs> Discord server. Um, all right, so cool, we got that. Uh, let's backtrack back to Backscatter, and we will. I'm sorry, Backbone, I should say, and we'll talk about it here. So you guys got off the deck super quick. I was sitting there working radios with Maverick, and you guys were just like taxied and were gone real quick. Um, yeah. Yeah, my game plan was to get in the air quick and get to our cap station and just hang out. Um, yeah. But there was uh, I didn't check this on the grounds. So this is my fault, but our waypoints weren't set up right for the cap station. So we kind of hung out gotcha. in the, like the legacy marshal hold for a little while while I got that dialed in. And then by the time we had a miscommunication uh, heading up the altitude, so I ended up high and my dash two was trying to catch up. So he was pretty low on gas. So that's why we did the the tanking. Gotcha. Is Sly Fox having control issues or something, or uh, I think just jitters. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was um, kind of all over the shop. So then air to air refueling okay. took took a longer while. than expected. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. But, uh, we were finally gassed up and back to where we we're supposed to be. Gotcha. Hung out for a bit. I didn't realize Red Crown was having the uh, PID issues, so I, I think. We probably could have got some work a little sooner. Yeah. But you know, no big deal there. So yeah, if you fast forward a bit, we fly around, link up with the tanker, get gas, and then end up in our cab station. Right. So and then it looks like um B's big twenty ones pop up at some point here. Yeah, so Red Crown asked there us we to go. take a pet shot in an SA-11. We did that. Okay. And then uh, I go forward about like five minutes, I think. Okay. We come back around. We get that pet shot off. Yep, there it is. And now here's where the here's where everything went sort of wrong. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So I saw the MIGs, I, I turned kind of offensive, then Red Crown said flow south, like, roger that. Gotcha. So I try to get out of there, because I, I know he's got uh, what the other flight coming up to take that. And then, for again, whatever reason, Dash 2 is, like, in. So I'm like, right. well, do I do I stay with my wingman or do I leave? So, of course, I stay with my wingman. Right. And then... Didn't I got? I think I got one good shot off, and then I ended up merged with a MiG twenty one and caught a heater. Gotcha. It looks like yeah. If you guys had just busted because you guys got a little bit uh, kind of uh, surprised because you were you were in pet shot mode working your yeah. arm and then turned right into them, then you're like, oh shit, let's let's head out of here. Like you would have had backscatter to back you up right here, yeah. which is probably yep, yep. what Jen's intent was, I would imagine, right? Yeah, that's what I think he was thinking. And then honestly, if we just bugged out, those guys would have had a great shot without having to worry about IFF. Yeah, for sure. Is Sly Fox still here? No, I think he hopped off. Okay. Um, so cool. So you, you killed at least one of them here with a 120 shot. Um, only critique I have for your engagement here up, up to this point, perfect shot with the 120 is, you know, you're, you're going after MiG 21s with a real close shot, you know, uh, five nautical miles with an M120 against a MiG 21. I maybe would have trusted that a little bit more and just kept more of an aggressive stance. Cause if you had been able to switch targets and say target his one of his wingmen here and just get a shot off real quick on him, you might've been, in better shape rather than uh going cold and defensive away from him does that kind of make sense at all yeah that makes sense I, I, part of the problem was i lost a little bit of sa so i didn't know yeah where my wingman was and i didn't want to i couldn't tell which group was yep dash two yeah. and which was the mig yeah for sure and yeah so it looks like cyclops had him in his sights but it was iff worried um yep. And unfortunately, ate the R60 there. Um, 
So that's unfortunate, but that's low SA at night kind of situations. And then we already talked to Backscatter about that. So sorry you died, man. Um, but I think just in the future, just stay a little bit more offensive and and trust that 120 shot against a MiG-21. Um, and R60 doesn't have much of a chance in the forward aspect. So I think you could have been a little bit more aggressive, but that's my only critique. Um, gotcha. Good copy. Yeah. Yeah, not sorry I died at all, learning experience. <laughs> Absolutely. That's why we do this. Have fun and, and learn stuff. Okay, moving on down the list of flights here. We've got uh, Ocean 1, my flight. Okay, uh, let's go through it. Uh, first air-to-ground focused flight of the day. So we'll kind of keep on going here. So we're we're working some radio issues to start off with. And I have my uh, Dash 3 lead us out just for the sake of getting those beautiful shots of tails of F4s as and flying in formation. And so we take off, no problems whatsoever. We're heading on to the uh, Marshall Point. I didn't even know Backbone was over here, so that's kind of how bad my SA is in the F4. Um, and we're just hanging out in the Marshall, waiting for our deed flight to join us and we come back around up north and you guys arrive on station basically right at the push time you guys pop some flares i get you in sight and we start our push um i guess i thought you guys were further out in front of us we probably didn't need to have you spin we probably just could have stayed in gate a little bit longer and just caught up with you and because now you're behind us so that's kind of my bad on the judgment there but yeah, that's fine yeah, it ended up working out okay. Uh, we split up our flights. So our second section was going to go for Siri Island out to the west, and our first sections of our flights were going to go after Abu Musa Island here. And um, so I start diving down onto the site. It comes online, fire a magnum at them, and we start a defensive turn back to the west to get away from the uh sam site and head back towards friendly land just in case one of us gets you know takes a sam and it looks like my harm actually hits something which is interesting so whoop, and boom <laughs> okay i scratch one sa6 from me nice. and then it looks like uh fallen mm. behind us had released a gbu 38 beautiful and that's just cruising doing its thing yeah, coming on down on that thing <laughs> Yep, and boom, onto a launcher and just continue disrupting that SAM site. And at this point, looks like our second section, uh, flown, uh, led by Hubert here. Hubert, if you want to take us through this engagement, go for it. So essentially, uh, we had a, or I had a bit of a loss of situational awareness. That's why we're coming in from kind of this weird angle, because I was trying to figure out where uh, the Rusties were. But uh, we figured that out, and then we started heading for C uh, the Siri Island here. Roger. And then uh, first it was, uh, the idea was that I'm going to be shooter, and then uh, my four was going to follow, but I couldn't get the harm off. Uh, it was just my mistake. I was I had the uh, wrong pylon selected just from muscle memory from the uh, earlier mission. Then, so then I'm like, four, you be the shooter. Four immediately takes a shot, which was uh, really good by him. He was right on it. Uh, let's see if that hits something. Yep, so that's great job from Frozone being set and ready to back up the lead there. So that's fantastic. Just like playing baseball, we got to have backup and we got to have everyone set and ready to go. So looks like that hit a fire can, not a huge surprise. And right on time, Bumble is right behind him, releasing that GBU 38. And it's going to come on down and impact. Oh, wait impact right on the SA-6 tracking radar. So that's perfect. Nice shot. Okay, and then so at this point, uh, we were just coming back, back, back and forth, trying to get the more SAMs, more possible SAMs or more possible like Magnum shots. Uh, and then uh, I think we just ended up egressing from here. Gotcha. So at this point, we had the flights, both Rusty Flight and uh, ocean flight recycle back towards the Marshall point so that way we didn't get just way strung out and trying to attack the second uh, shot there. It looks like Army Fist 
um, I guess, you know, got confused on the radio and did not uh, start to recycle back towards the the uh, Marshall stack. Yeah, here. I kept telling him on, the, uh, on our mates uh, to come back south. That he was way too uh, pushing too hard, and I don't know why he wasn't listening. Gotcha. So we're just kind of spinning at the top of the Marshall point here, and then we finish the spin and push more or less have our flights reconstituted as we want them. And we've got our flights set up to put um, the first section on Greater Tomb Island and the second what? section on Lesser Tomb yep. Island. And Army Fist, I guess, oh, sorry. Sorry. did our job for us, unfortunately, but then got hit by an SA-2. And I had no idea this was happening. I thought... We were, I knew we were getting splashed by SAM launches, but I thought it was from um, I thought it was from the Siad Diad team number two working up around Bondar boss. No, so remember, that, remember I was calling the launches. I, I was watching that stuff happening. Yeah, I, I do remember that. I was like wonder. I was like, how is he? How is he seeing that? Is he seeing that on the F10 map or something? Okay. So I was just like, I was lost on that part. And then we come down. And beautiful shot from Maverick. I had him with a fighter to fighter contract saying, you're going to be the shooter on this one. I accidentally get too close to him and trail here. And I'm just like, oh, shit, <laughs> hit the brakes. <laughs> and uh, so he shoots. Beautiful shot. We go defensive. I thought that uh, a Sam fired at us because I got more splash. I think this time actually up from Bondar Abbas. So I go a little more defensive than I really needed to. Then I picked up Maverick back on my nine here and moved to move back into trail. And I poof, I got Thanos snapped. <laughs> God damn it. Son of a bitch. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then I Which, put those 238s out on. Uh, no, that's on mine. They're going for. The that's track yours. Radar. Yeah. Yeah. Track radar and search radar. So looking for something in the mission here. I go and Bumble goes at the same time. Yeah, we go at the same time. I just put 238s out on what was left of that SA3 site. Yeah, and I don't see anything happening in the server necessarily out of the ordinary. Nothing's spawning. Nothing's doing anything. We just got... Did we Did we yeah. magically turn to the same heading at the same time and that was it? Yeah, and I, I <laughs> there guess... There was a uh, weird stutter, though, when you guys, because like, it kind of yeah. lagged and I thought the server crashed, and then I pulled up yeah. tab and it showed you disconnected, but there was a yeah. stutter. There definitely was. I don't know what, where, how, when, what, or why happened there, um, but uh, it looks like uh, Joe Boo was not pleased by his bucket of KFC earlier. Yeah, apparently. So... Um, after that, we've got uh, one three takes over the flight, obviously as he should. So Hubert, you got the rest of the debrief. Sorry if I'm lagging here a little, but uh, yeah. So we're going for the uh, lesser tomb here, getting uh, absolutely nothing from there. No, I, I think we got an SA six, uh, but uh, Bumble said he dropped bombs on it. But then uh, trying to get around get nothing then i see a couple just Ooh. fire cans and i just take up take a shot that just doesn't yeah i'm like yeah that's why the yep. mission is called in harm's way right here <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh boy so that was Very close cool. Yeah. Um, that's, and then that's an from, interesting moment yeah. from what i can tell as a spectator it looks like you guys just then egressed at that point and then uh, yeah we did a marshal and then uh marshal and then rtb roger that okay nice job and i saw mavericks landing because he was streaming and it looked like a beautiful touchdown and landing um we've kind of got got everything from rusty one here but i guess we should do it more formally fallen are you still here yeah beautiful yeah. all right Fallen's well, always still here yeah, yeah that's that's true um, all right, we'll back it up and we'll take a look at Fallen coming off of the RDNS Suez over here. Yeah, it started up kind of weird because I I, I think I uh, was a dash to, I don't know what he did, but he broke his landing gear. So it was only three of us that went in uh, Marshall, uh, the boat Marshall. Roger. And then that's why we took a little bit longer and <clears throat> just pushed directly. And luckily we were on time up or. Um, Raj. Push. Uh, 
they were a couple issues. Yeah, I noticed the Dash Four was having issues with the SA. Yeah, I think it was his first mission, if I recall correctly. Uh, a good first mission though to start him off with a night a nighttime DAD right. effort. So coming yeah. off of a ski jump carrier, so perfect there. <laughs> um, yeah, then, with no yeah. landing aids. Right. Yeah, that too. Yeah, well, he didn't make it anyways. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, by this point, like I already had you guys on my essay page, so I was just uh, setting uh, for an uh, intercept for uh, right there. Yep. Um, and then from that, it tried to separate uh, one and th uh, one and two for uh, uh, Abu Musa, and uh, three and four for uh, Syria Island. It got kind of messy there with the uh, formation. Yep. And that's kind of my bad. I, I I shouldn't have made you spin. I should have just stayed in gate for a little bit longer, and we would have been good to go. There was a bit of a miscommunication here too. Like I told I told number two the. Uh, he was just going to uh, basically cover my uh, drop, and I think he dropped all his ordnance on the on the target. Yep, that's okay. Yeah, but we yeah we killed that thing anyway, so that's fine. Yeah, he yep. dropped all of it. And we're pretty much uh, well. That's fine. I mean, we're, we're going to shack yeah. it anyway on the way out from the target area. And yeah, he's, the, he's and like I got very confused back. when we were pushing because I saw that, that you 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 guys separated, but. I saw somebody going to the right, but I'm like, that doesn't seem to be a spot. Yeah. It, it was uh, your, your uh, second element. It was going to the right for some reason. So I was like, which way should I go? And then I just went, no, I'm going for, for this guy to go into Abu Musa. Yeah. And I think that's, uh, I think we just lost a little bit of situational awareness as to, mm. you yeah, know, not to put where? words in Hubert's mouth, but to be like, where where's the island we're supposed to attack, you know, versus the one we were going to attack. Yeah, and, and, then, the, uh, and the timing with us being in a uh, trail, like I was, uh, I was about like three, four miles trail from you, and both times it worked fine because I did not see a single radar up. Yeah. When, when I when I ran in, I I have like clear for my bombs just to drop them and just turn around. That one I I dropped on on the track radar and um, search radar and then uh, turn around to make sure it was dead and then just drop it on a on a uh, um, utility vehicle there. Roger. It's pretty awesome to see those little big red bubbles keep disappearing more and more yeah. and more through the tack view. And then, and, like I said, sadly, number four was kind of doing his own thing, and even though I was telling him to yeah. come back. Uh, what Bumble, happened to one three for for you? That was me. Yeah, that oh, was right. So you so you crashed got, out. Yeah, I crashed out right crashed. after I put those bombs down. And your dash two jack. Uh, same. I think he crashed too. Oh, he was yeah. getting, he, he crashed out he too. He dropped all of his. He dropped all of his ordnance on the first island. Uh, yeah, okay. and then he went low. Uh, he went low gas and had to divert. Uh, okay, and then but, uh, but he, he was trying to come back, and then he crashed. I think. And, and he I crashed just, again. Yeah. Yeah. I just yeah. went attack, and I just went uh, landing. But it was weird because the, the the AI gave me the wrong heading, so I was thinking like that was the heading, and I was like, hang on, gotcha. I was thinking right, so it's kind of been kind of messy with my approach. Flying and flying it to on speed AOA for so long, you could be a blue angel. And then <laughs> we saw the uh, we saw the bolter, and then I think you got the the one wire on the second yeah. trap. Yeah, the second time I have better time to set a good approach because the first one was a like very messy approach. Nice, awesome. Moving on down the list to Clyde three. Anyone from Clyde three still here? Yep. Do, Roger. You, do you have time or uh, can I uh, do uh, the debrief for Dawn 6 because I have to go really quick and it oh, will yep. be really quick. Like, really yeah, go ahead. Let, let, let yeah. Go. Yep, we'll go back to Dawn, th uh, Dawn 6 here. Uh, amazing to see four Mirage 2000s in a mission. We haven't had that in a long time. Um, yep. So it's interesting. There's definitely some sort of a weird audio bug with the Mirage 2000 because you guys started up your engines and we heard the RPM spooling up and then immediately just sounded like you were in full afterburner while taxiing. Straight to, yeah, full RPM uh, sound is weird. Yep. Um, yep. Due to personal mistakes, uh, uh, being a uh, DCS audio out, I was waiting for someone to start up the engine. Just realized my audio was out, so we took time to take off. 
Uh, right. Because of that, we didn't have time. We had only seven minutes to do a pre-tanking on full time, so we didn't go for it. Right. Um, main number three and four uh, were uh, new to uh, this server, so they uh, they liked the SA, uh, especially by night. Uh, thank God we didn't have to take any fights uh, because they would have been killed straight up. I think pretty sure. Okay. Um, number three crashed. Uh, connection lost. Okay. Uh, Discord too, so it's not about them. Uh, number four, a uh, very bad essay, and I, I told him to go back to to RTB at Aldafra, and I think he personally disconnected from DCS to not have to speak to Red Crown. Oh, okay. Uh, that, that's what I think. Um, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, low on fuel because of me. Um, we have not been caught by uh, Red Crown when there was uh, bandits around. Uh, Roger. Yeah, the, the people doing Sid. We we haven't caught by uh, Ray Crown, so basically we've done. Nothing. Okay. Uh, Sorry about that. I, I more or less had just sit back, and... just as a like a contingency, because I honestly had a feeling that we were going to get flanked from the west, and it just kind of didn't materialize. So that's my fault. Sorry. Yeah. When they came from the west, we were um, literally bingo fuel and had to come back to the tanker. We tanked at like below one thousand. Uh, oh, I took time gotcha. to find the tanker. Personal mistake on navigation, uh, and we took time. We took time to come back to it. We tanked pretty easily, quickly. We just took like 1.5 uh, to RTB. We RTB at uh, Aldafra. Nobody on the frequency, so we tried the formation landing. Something went uh, wrong, so I go around. Gotcha. Basically, a pretty chill flight. And yeah, my my number three and four. Uh, not, not not a good first mission by night, I think. Not, not yep. good to do first mission by night. Yeah, it definitely makes it a bit harder, that's for sure. Um, yep. Do you guys basically uh, just make uh, radio calls for uh, an uncontrolled field once you uh, got there? No, no. Basically, uh, I asked well, I asked if there was a controller, no response. So we, we just yeah went right down. We watched the map to know if there was someone in the the circuit, but there was nobody. So just gotcha. put on it like, straight away. Just one uh, one thing I I think could be better is to do a cap station from west to east because from north to south the people that are on the south cap station are way too far from the bandits. We do like yeah. for thirty or forty more not commands to go on the the action. So yep, so yeah. I suggest east from west. That's it. Roger. Okay. Um, Thank you. We will uh, move on to the next flight. Thanks for flying. Clyde 3, let's uh, back it up and take a look at Clyde 3's flight. Uh, Clyde 3, you guys still here? Yep. Beautiful. You guys were also coming off of the RDNS Suez, and it looks like you guys were the second flight off the deck. All right, Brooklyn, take it away. Uh, yeah, we coordinated with our... With the Bonnie flight, um, we we knew they had a longer flight than we did, so we you know that's why we didn't rush to get off the deck. Roger. Uh, we pushed towards we pushed towards the Marshall waypoint one, I believe waypoint two, and then uh, we were on our way to waypoint three, but uh, looks like a little bit of desync here from Santa. Yeah, I was playing a PowerPoint there for a few minutes. My game took a nap, so that's that. Oh, that's weird. But it came back, you know, three, four minutes later. Oh, huh. okay. Yeah, at this point, we were pushing towards waypoint three. And then before we even got there to turn back, uh, we were we were given push time. And our uh, partner flights were just in perfect position to help us out. Perfect. Well, everybody did a really, really good job with the timeline, because even though flights may have not had any turns in the Marshall stacks, everybody was still pushing right on time. So that was kind of perfect. And looks like yes. you guys are out here. So is that a pet shot from Tide there? Nope. Yeah. Purely defensive. Roger. And this is when it gets a little chaotic once you have five takes off. Oh, yep. That's a... <laughs> I forgot if these guys were going to spawn. That's interesting. Okay, so Tide shoots another harm over there. Tide, did you know those F5s were there? Nope. No oh. clue. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> At this point, this I, 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 I had the guy locked, but I also saw the Viper coming in, so I kind of held off. I didn't know what to do until they merged, and I just turned away because I didn't want to take a shot there. 
Yeah, I was full music. I had no idea. Yeah. yeah, at this point, I had a, I had, I always saw him on the essay page. I got him locked up. I just try to confirm. Roger. Yep. Well, that's a good shot. He's definitely dead. And then, uh, ooh, wow, good dodge from Tide there. And then, uh, looks like head nose to nose merge with Brooklyn here. Yeah, I try to go guns because I, I was. <laughs> By the time I realized he was a bad guy, I went guns. Roger. And it looks yeah. like Tide had got him with an M9X shot heading uphill. Cool. Well, we'll analyze that a little bit more when we go over to Tide here. And then were you guys able to then re kind of constitute yourselves and then get back to air to ground? Or is it kind of like over from that point? At this point, I think uh, my essay was a little messed up because they were going after the, the northern target over there, which probably was a lot easier. I couldn't get close enough to this thing to, uh, to the airfield to get a proper shot off. Gotcha. And it looks like Santa over to the north was able to get a couple of them off. And, yeah, I, uh, I, yeah I, I asked one of the F-16 guys to delay his home shot for a second. Yeah. Um, and then that gave me enough time to push in because the SA-11 was off for a few minutes and I got five five targets with five GBO 38s Gotcha. That's awesome. Yeah, um, basically that became a wild weasel. <laughs> and then backing up to santa's shot here so he's yeah basically just skirting right along the edge there and gets a bunch of kills with a whole slew of jdams as advertised and then it looks like uh you guys egressed from there basically yeah we went to, took on some fuel before we head back to the ship gotcha and then it looks like you guys all came aboard the ship pretty well. I think you all, none of you guys boltered. I don't, if I don't uh, remember that correctly. Um, and you guys came back. Yeah, we and it looks like you guys kind of set up for separation for almost like a modified case three or case two. And uh, you guys all got aboard beautifully. Nice job, Clyde three flight. Um, you might not have hit all the SAM sites, but hey, you got back on the deck all safely. So that's good to go. Um, and then I guess we'll hop over to, um, from there, why don't we hop down to Tide's flight, Bonnie 3, and, uh, we'll have Tide walk us through his flight. Uh, yeah, we delayed our takeoff because I... Put the time in the box had us getting to marshall right at push which uh perfectly worked like i think we arrived at marshall five seconds before push or something that's pretty nice wild. <laughs> uh, so we just kind of cruise just kind of min maxed uh save fuel because no pre-vol tanking yeah uh and then yeah i got our timing like pretty much smack on just to basically skip marshall completely and go straight to push perfect and you guys um, are basically right in perfect line of breast with uh, Clyde there. Yeah, and then, so, it got a little weird, so we didn't have good SA on where the sites were, so I was full music, two was in uh, mode two, so he was shooter, Roger. and then I was cruising along, and then that thing popped up, and I had a PGM two shot, so I uh, took it uh, pretty gotcha. much self-defense, because it grabbed me, and then I looked kind of, like, correlated, and I was like, I'm in range, or I'm near range, so I need to... Um, go uh shoot that and go defensive and then i float out um and then red crown started making calls that sa2 was still locking or sa11 still locking so i took another shot to let rack go in and start uh working like kind of like positioning on it which he got a hard kill on nice. that uh but then i looked up and there's an f5 in front of me yeah like it's basically so... right near windscreen it wasn't coming up on data link and i couldn't get iff so i grabbed it um, I locked it, got uh, like pretty much no IFF return. So gotcha. I wasn't comfortable taking the shot on the front. And so I started going for identification of it, but I lost him. Where did I lose him? I lost him, I think coming around here somewhere. So I had the shot lined. I had good lock. I had good everything. And I, I was double checking to avoid blue on blue. I was like, all right, guys, what's your positions right now? Is anyone on surface? And I got no reply. Uh, and then yeah. I saw it shoot at me, and I was like, that's hostile. Yeah. So then I just kinetically, and then I bugged out for a minute, yep. build separation, and get SA back. 
reacquired him, came up. I actually I pull, I called Brooklyn off, and then he turned back in. And okay. then luckily that shot didn't kill me. And then I just took yeah. it up. In reverse, yeah, that's, that's my fault. Like, no, you're good. And I was like, Brooklyn, confirm you uh, went down, not up. And he goes, I went down. I was like, cool. And then I took the 9x shot. Nice. And well, then it seems stalled, like. Stalled the aircraft completely. And then I went to recovery. And yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Well, it seems like you guys had good BFM comms going. If you guys were, you know, asking for who's up, who's down, you know, yep. who's nose on, who's no, who's cold. So that's yeah. really good. Um, and then it looks like part at that point, you guys are probably Arizona because it looks like you guys, uh, I was fired. Arizona rack had one left and that's what time he timed a shot with Santa to, uh, suppress. There's that shot. Ah, uh, there's that shot. Beautiful. Yep, suppress it. And then, uh, then we bugged out with the tanker and just to see if we had to come back for coverage. Nice. And yeah, I mean, that was perfect. Cause that set that up for Santa there, but, uh, and it looks like Santo was able to go defensive on that guy super yeah, easy. It, no it wasn't suppressing, but also it's an SA-11, so. Yeah. We were just um, focusing on the snow drift. Perfect. So nice. Join up on the tanker, got some gas. Flight back home was uneventful, or how'd that go? Uh, it was uneventful. Uh, we just had a little bit of miscommunication with our crown. We were trying to get on frequency. We thought tower would still be up, but we were pushing Lee with tower. Nothing. We just went see Taff. Gotcha. Got the overhead. Um, friend with me all day was my speed management was pretty bad, which okay. made it difficult for rack. So if he was here, I'd apologize again. But yeah, my speed management was jank. <laughs> yep, that's all good. All right. Well, thanks, uh, Tied, for flying. And um, we'll move on to Louise 2. Anyone from Louise 2 still here? I'm here. Beautiful. Uh, Want to take us through it? Yeah, we were thinking about staying on the ground a little bit to time our arrival at the Marshall, but just as Bonnie, we uh, didn't get to stay on the ground too long. Uh, we arrived at the, the Marshall about just as we were pushing, uh, perfectly timed. Nice. And uh, then what we didn't do this uh, that well was actually figuring out the game plan because our game plan was to have our seed group be reactive and the deed group follow in on our reactive shots okay but of course that doesn't give too much of a time frame for the deed group to know what they're doing so we didn't have a clear coordination between the sa11 at uh, bandar and kashim island gotcha Okay. So we just got disorient, uh, lost all SA, and uh, pretty much did nothing productive. Roger. Uh, but we lost Talma 1 uh, to the SA 3, and we just gave up the SA 11s and just went full Avenge on uh, the SA 3. Gotcha. Roger that. Um, so it was that probably after this engagement then and then you guys are going after the SA3. Yeah. Oh, looks like yeah, one of, looks like one of you got a I think yeah, uh Essa got a hard kill on, on the snow drifts. Yep. Nice shot. Um and we, anything we, else? Uh, yeah, the the air to air engagements we yep. uh, we were trying to coordinate with a uh, group coming in. That was backscatter, was it? Yep, backscatter. Yeah, and our uh, thought was to be behind them. So when they went cold, we would uh, be there to follow them up. But then we lost them on our uh, our data link uh, from the AWACS or whatever. So we became a little I just suddenly saw one airplane exploding almost right in front of me, and I think that gotcha. was Cyclops. Yeah, I think, uh, I think uh, that was Chili probably there. exploding you, exploding right in front of you there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that we could maybe have done that a little bit better, but that wasn't us because we didn't have information about exactly their position, and we still shot, so uh, that gotcha. was sort of on us. Yeah, I think that uh, 
he definitely helped to back up backscatter. If they hadn't uh, had the blue on blue, they probably would have been fine without you. But I think it's important that you were there to help them out once that had occurred. And then uh, you guys basically you know, got your harms off. And uh, was that spin for a rejoin? Yeah, we did a spin for a rejoin when we took out the SA3 because then we have no dead uh, ordnance rest left. Roger. Uh, we were all a shotgun, so it was just go uh, back home. When we got the pop ups in the west, we were debating whether we should uh, go back and uh, and uh, help, but. Uh, all our group was pretty much uh, on Joker, so uh, we didn't request uh, to join the fray. Roger. Alrighty. Uh, well, thanks for flying. And uh, looks like uh, I think uh, Thelma 2 is going to be our last one. If there's anyone here from Thelma 2 left. They were with us, so uh, the only okay. thing to report was pretty much that uh, we didn't coordinate very well. Louis and Thelma. Okay. So when Seed pushed, Dia didn't follow, and when Dia pushed, Thea didn't follow. Gotcha. Uh, so the only thing we did uh, quite well coordinated was the attack on the SA3. That was the one thing. Gotcha. Um, I think that for the future, for coordination between flights, is to probably separate out targets um, geographically. Out on the west, we had separated out targets like we're going to attack this island first, then we're going to hit this island, and our section is going to hit this island, our other section is going to hit this other island. So if you maybe had separated out and started working more methodically, but through the area, like like start at Keshem or start at you know Hormuz and then work to Bondar Abbas or something, that probably would have worked out a little bit better for the coordination, but. Um, so it looks like we didn't get as much of a good seed coverage and uh, Diad at um, the Bondar Abbas area, but the snow drift at Keshem is gone and the SA3 site on Hormuz is gone. So at least that's better than, uh, than nothing for sure. Yeah, the last time we did get all of the SA11s, both at Keshem and Badar, and, uh, yeah. but then we had a different game plan. So we gotcha. just... Uh, structuring who were going where, but we didn't do that this time and uh, it didn't go as well. Gotcha. Roger that. Well, I think that that shows that uh, you definitely have to have a plan and when, <laughs> when attacking SAM sites. Um, yeah. Anyone have any other questions, concerns, or want to see anything additional before we wrap it up? Uh, just one thing to consider. Um, I understand why, like, let's say Team 3 both had Bonnie three, Clyde three, but when yep. we were in ACM trying to communicate together, having like two three twos, two three ones on the oh, same, yeah. you seem to be yeah. a little more complicated. Yeah, for sure. I would can definitely understand that. Um, yeah, we'll definitely change that up in the future on the ATO for sure. Um, the idea was at least to, if you heard three on the radio, you know, then you would know, hey, that's somebody in in my team. But that makes total sense that with BFM comms having two three twos and two three ones that's you know that's difficult for sure so that's definitely good to know um and it looks like we got two f-15s um that would have been taken care of by the next uh set of jets in the next vol <laughs> awesome guys great job in this mission um i had a ton of fun i'm super pissed that i crashed out but Thank we've you. tried We've tried this mission way too many times and we will not be retrying it at this point. So um, we'll move on to the next thing. It might be a while until we get...